Okay, so the first question, it says find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex 30 gon. Sum of the measures of the interior angles, we learned an equation for that. The equation is n minus 2 times 180. n being the number of sides or the number of corners. The number of sides and corners is the same. This says it's a 30 gon, so 30 sides. We plug that into the equation. It's 28 times 180. And then you would plug that into a calculator. 28 times 180 is 5,040. So then that is your answer. Okay, for number two, um, it says find the sum of the measures of the exterior angles of a convex 21 gun. Um, regardless of how many sides it has, the exterior angles, exterior angles, always add to 360 degrees for any shape. So this one is 360, there's no calculating involved. The sum of all the exterior angles will be 360, regardless of how many sides the shape has. Okay, number three. Um, this one is one of those ones that you might wanna practice more than once, because it's like multiple steps and ties everything together. So it says, if the measure of each interior angle of a regular polygon is 108. So regular polygon means all the angles are the same. So to find all the interior angles or what they add to, you can do 108 times the number of sides or number of angles to get all the angles within the shape or what they add to. Um, and that you're going to set equal to n minus 2 times 180 because this is what all the angles within a shape add to. And then from here, you're going to solve it um, to find the number of sides. So we're going to distribute the 180. Is it warm in here or is it just me? I just decided to wear a sweater today. No. Okay, minus 180. And now we're solving for N. These two added together, negative 180 and 108 is negative 72n. And n equals 5. So that is the number of sides the shape has. But the question asks, asks for the measure of each exterior angle. Um, so we need to do one more step. So the exterior angles of any shape add to 360. And then there are five sides or five angles, however you want to think of it. So we need to divide this by five to get each exterior angle. So this 72 is each exterior angle. So yes, a little bit more steps, a little bit more challenging. So this might be one that you want to practice a couple times, like on a separate sheet of paper or a whiteboard, or whatever you have to work with. Okay. Then number four gets a little bit easier again. For parallelogram ABCD, and they show you the parallelogram, find the value of X. In a parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal. So to find X, we're gonna set these equal and solve for X. 3X plus 20 equals 5X minus 12, and we will solve.
Number five, um, more of a conceptual problem. It says, which of the following is a property of a parallelogram? So just reviewing some of the properties of parallelograms. Parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel. Um, the opposite sides are congruent as well. So this is the same measure as this and so on and so forth. Um, then the opposite angles are equal. So this angle is equal to this one. And then this angle is equal to this one. Then in addition to that, the diagonals. So there's a diagonal here and then a diagonal here. Now you can see visually that those diagonals aren't the same length. Like this one's definitely longer than this one, but they do bisect each other. So this is the same measure as this. And then this here is the same measure as this. So as we go through these, we're looking for something that is here. Diagonals are congruent. No, we said they weren't congruent. Diagonals are perpendicular. I can see it right there. No. Diagonals bisect the angles. Maybe, but I didn't even state that, so let's not choose that one. And then diagonals bisect each other. That is absolutely yes. Okay, next. Number six, find the values of x and y so that ABCD will be a parallelogram. So in this picture here, if this is a parallelogram, which it says it is, then it's parallel line, parallel line. And then this right here is a transversal. And then with that transversal, alternate interior angles are equal. So this angle equals this. So 4x equals 24. And then you could draw the parallel lines and transversal this way, but this angle is equal to this one. So we have 32 equals y minus 10, and then we can solve. Plus 10, plus 10, 42 equals y. So the answer is a. Okay, number seven gets easier again. Find the value of x so that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. In a parallelogram, opposite angles are equal. So this angle equals this one, and then this angle equals this one. So therefore, x is 46 degrees, and the answer is 46. Number eight is a graphing one. The best way to do this is to graph the easiest and shortest way to figure this out. So I have a graph here. Let's see if I can get it all fit in the frame. Okay, so it says that parallelogram ABCD has vertices A, B, C. Find the coordinates of D. I'm going to have to zoom out here. It's going to get blurry for a second. Okay, so what I would recommend doing is graphing the three points and then figuring out what that fourth point is just visually. So a is at 0, 0, so here's point A. B is at 2, 4. I know you don't have graph paper, you can just watch. And then C is 10, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. Up here, make sure you counted right. Okay, and it says what are the coordinates of D? Well, so this is a parallelogram. So D would have to be like right here. And then remember the slope of the opposite sides is the same. So this is down four over two. So we can go down four over two to get D right here. And D is at eight, zero. So that is our coordinates for D. And the best way to do that would be to graph it. Okay. Actually, while I have this zoomed out, I'm going to go ahead and do 11 because 11 is graphing as well. So 8, graph it. And then 11, graph it. Or you don't have to graph it, just watch me graph. Okay. So 11, it says ABCD is rectangle and it gives you three points. Find the coordinates of A. So just like with this one, and of course tomorrow you'll have graph paper to do this as well. 
let's see, v is at negative 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here is v. c is at 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. c. d is at 7, 3 right here. And it wants to know where a is. Well, if this is a rectangle, the problem says it's a rectangle, then a would have to be right here at negative 5, 3. So that is the answer, negative 5, 3. And then you could graph the rectangle. OK. So that's the graph ones. Just graph it, and then you should be able to see where the point lands. OK. Now, number 9, zooming back in again. Which of the following is a property of all rectangles? So let's just draw a rectangle. Let's see. For a rectangle, what makes this a rectangle is it has the four 90 degree angles. Um, also, for the rectangle, the diagonals here, the diagonals bisect each other because it's a parallelogram. But in addition to that, these diagonals are the same length. So all of these are the same length. And then it also has all the things of a parallelogram as well, like the parallel sides and all of that. So which of the following is a property of all rectangles? Four congruent sides? No, I can see that right away. Diagonals are perpendicular. Do they form 90 degree angles? No. Diagonals bisect the angles? No. And then four right angles, definitely for a rectangle, four right angles. Next, ABCD is a rectangle with diagonals AC and BD. It says AC is this length and BD is 56. Find the value of X. Diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So therefore, we can set these two equal to solve for X. 2X plus 10 equals 56. 2X equals 46. Okay, for 12, for the rhombus A, B, C, D, find the measure of angle 1. Um, in a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular, meaning they form 90 degree angles. So, angle 1 would then be 90 degrees. Again, you'll be able to use your quadrilateral family tree. So what I would do for that is like, it says rhombus. Look for rhombus. And it says right here, diagonals are perpendicular. And you can use that to figure it out. OK, next. 13, we got a square. It says find the measure of PRS. So kind of trace the points. PRS would be this angle right here. Well, in a square. I don't know how in-depth you want to go with this. These angles are 90 degrees, right? And then the diagonals are going to bisect that angle. So PRS is 45 degrees. So 45 degrees. Fourteen is a pretty easy one. Choose a pair of base angles of the trapezoid ABCG. Um, base angles. That would be A and B are base angles, and so are D and C. So as I look through the answer choices, that's what I'm looking for. Are A and C base angles? No. B and D? No. A and D? No. D and C? Yes. In trapezoid D, E, F, G, find the measure of angle D right here. Well, um, in this trapezoid, parallel lines and a transversal. So these are consecutive interior angles and they are supplementary. So 180 minus 136 will give you angle D. And that comes out to 44. Okay. So 44 degrees. Okay. 16 and 17 have to do with the trapezoid mid segment. So I'm going to draw a trapezoid right here. 
Um, and then here's the mid segment. Remember this mid segment is an average of the two bases or like the number in between these two bases. So it said in the hood of Olivia's car it is shaped like a trapezoid. The base boarding the windshield is 30 inches and the base at the front of the car is 24 inches. What is the width of the median? So the shorter side is 24, longer is 30, and then we're trying to find this length here. You can find the middle number if that works for your brain. The other way is just to find the average of these two. So 24 plus 30 divided by 2, we get 54 over 2, which would be 27. So this is 27, and that is your answer. Okay, 17 is one of the ones that are a little bit more challenging that you might want to practice um, tonight. Okay, so it says the length of one base of the trapezoid is 44, median 36, and the other base is this expression. So I'm going to draw a trapezoid. I'm leaving this room over here to solve a little bit. So I draw a trapezoid. It says the median is 36. One of the bases is 44, so that's going to be the longer one since it's longer than the median. And then the other base is 2x plus 10. 2x plus 10. Oh, thank you, Dylan. Okay, there's more than one way to solve it. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to solve it. Um, from 36 to 44, that would be plus 8. So, therefore, to find this length, I could do minus 8 to get this length. And 36 minus 8, would you rather me do like a big equation or no? Oh, okay, the equation would be better? Okay, I'll do both. I'll do both. Some people like the shortcut, some people like the equations. Okay. Um, okay, so shortcut way, since this is minus 8, we can put that equal to 28 and then solve it for x that way. So if you like the shortcuts, that would work. If you like more of like, just give me the concept the way we've always done it, then this plus this divided by 2 would equal to 36. So we can do that. So 2x plus 10 plus 44. So the two bases divided by 2 equals 36, and we can solve it this way. So it just depends on you. Either way, it's a little bit more challenging, but you can do it. Okay, so to just solve this, multiply by 2 to get rid of this, and multiply this by 2. Then we got 2x plus 10 plus 44 would be 54 equals 36 times 2 would be 72. Did you follow that? So multiply both sides by 2, and then I combine 10 plus 44 to get that. Then subtract 54. Yeah. 72 minus 54 is 18. The shorter cut way where this just equal 28, you could just do 2x plus 10 equals 28 and do it that way. And it comes out to the same thing, 2x equals 18 and then x equals 9. Okay, 8 it gets easier again. Given trapezoid A, B, C, D with median EF right here, which of the following is true? And it puts everything in an equation format. So B, C plus A, D divided by 2 would equal EF is how you could put it into equation format. And that is literally right here. Okay. Then 19, move into kites. Um, it says find the measure of angle S right here. So a little review about kites. With a kite, these two angles are the same measure. Also, 
things to know. For a quadrilateral, the angles add up to 360 degrees, so we're going to use that fact to help us here as well. So it says find the measure of angle S. S and Q are the same measure. So we'll do 360 minus these two numbers to begin with. And then once you plug this in a calculator, it comes out to 200 degrees. That's what's left over after you subtract those two angles. And then that 200 degrees needs to be split evenly among these two angles. So we divide by 2 to get 100 degrees. And then each of these is 100 degrees. And then number 20, it says JKLM is a kite. Find JM. Okay, so since it's a kite, this makes 90 degree angles here. JM right here, this length. Um, this would be a right triangle, so we're going to use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find this length. So 8 and 5 are your a and b. 8 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. 89 equals c squared and then take the square root of both sides and b is your answer okay 21 i only did with my honors students last year um, so it's definitely an honors question um, i'm going to quickly go over it because even in my first period class there was a few students that were just kind of curious as to what an honors question would look like um, so it's up to you, um, but I'm going to go over it anyway, and just I'm going to go over it quickly too. So it says find x. Um, here it says it's a rhombus, so this makes a 90 degree angle, and this would be 90 degrees. Then these three angles would add up to 180 because they're a triangle. So that means that these two would add up to 90 because 90 plus 90 is 180. So this plus this is 90, and we'll set it up like this equals 90. So because we have this squared, um, we're going to have to factor this, but we can only factor it when this is equal to zero over here. So I'm just going to put this over on this side so that way my equation is equal to zero. Okay, then from here, I'm going to break this up into factors. You may remember this from algebra one, x and x, and then I need two numbers that multiply to negative 70, that add to 3, and that would be positive 10 and negative 7. So 10 and negative 7 would multiply to negative 70 and add to positive 3. So there's my factors. The next step, zero property, you might remember this, you set each of these equal to zero. And you get x equals negative 10 and x equals positive 7. So we got two solutions, but there's only one solution to this problem. So what you would do now is test these out to see which one would work. And if you get a negative number for a measurement of an angle, that solution can't work. So when we plug negative 10 into here, we get negative 30 plus 20, which would give us negative 10 degrees. And you can't have a measurement that's negative. So this solution doesn't work, and the only solution that works is the positive 7, so that would be your solution. And then to find each of these angles, you would just do 21 plus 20, which would be 41. And then this 7 squared would be 49. And that is how you would do that. So, yeah, fine. Um, that won't be on the test. It's just like, that's cool. Okay. 